able to see the screen that I've got with you? Can there please be an indication just letting me know that you're able to see the screen that I'm currently sharing? Okay, thank you for those who've uh, given us that indication. Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, as Annie had mentioned, that this is um, uh, just an overview or a brief uh, showing you on what the um, expectation you are expected to see when we roll out with our personal income tax filing. I'm sure most of you at this point are quite familiar with the portal that we have just seen. Uh, you would have seen it and some of you would have actually um, be using, currently using our portals, uh, independent on what uh, services that you are seeking through the portal. So for the purpose of this demonstration, uh, what we will do is file an income tax return for the year 2018, uh, which currently has what is expected to be seen when we see the uh, income tax, re the personal income tax return that is expected for those of us who will be filing it. And uh, categories of taxpayers that fall into this um, space would be those that are uh, earning or deriving business income. Okay, so what we have is uh, where every time we go into a return or any filing that is required, uh, the first page that we are normally given is um, the terms and conditions. Uh, where we would be outlining the expectations as per the tax office and the uh, laws that govern the filing. So when we read this, we see this, uh, we will be reading it. And in the event we agree with this, then we will be able to check the bottom line at the bottom. But in the event that we do not agree and we do not check this box at the bottom, please note that you will not be able to proceed to the next page as we are seeing here. I think this is common in all of the forms that FRCS has rolled out, whereby you will only be able to proceed after all the fields that is mandatory in this particular page has been completed successfully. So upon checking of that, the system is able to allow you to move to the next page. And the next um, uh, page would be actually doing a determination of what your residential status is. Uh, this determination is actually made through a series of questions, whether you are a resident or not. Uh, I know that we would be familiar with just checking a box saying whether you're a resident or not, but here, uh, being self-assessment, the system is expected to make this determination on behalf of the FRCS office. So the first question that comes up is, in the past year, did you reside in Fiji? In the event you take yes, you are determined to be a resident and the system will allow you to move forward. But if you think no, that you are not a resident in Fiji during that period, the system will ask you another question. And the other question is the following follow-up question is, are you a temporary resident in Fiji for employment purpose? You have to make a selection here, whether it's be yes or no. If you're going to check yes, you will be able to move forward from here because the system will now read that you are a resident and will apply the resident tax rate to you. But in the event should you check no, it'll be another follow-up question in order to do this. The follow-up question following from there is, are you domiciled in Fiji? And you will have to make a selection again here between the yes and no. So should you check yes, the system now reads you as a resident and it'll stop there, it'll allow you to move forward. But in the event you're checking no, the follow-up question coming through and that follow-up question would be, were you present in Fiji for period or periods amounting in aggregate 183 days in any 12 month period? And we know that that is about six months of any year. If you take check, uh, check yes here, to move forward from here, the system has made a determination that you are a resident. However, if you check no, there'll be another follow-up question coming through here. And the final question here is, are you an employee of government posted abroad? And I'm sure most of us in here would understand what this is. Uh, we have normally diplomats who are abroad. Uh, they would have checked yes or no to all of them, but they are locals or they are residents in Fiji. 
but because of government requirements and their posting, therefore they are posted abroad. So if you check yes here, you will be determined that you are a resident. And if in the event you check no, it will be determining you as a non-resident. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will check all of this as yes, so that we'll just move forward to the next one. I hope we understand the, determina the, the determining of a resident or not. Uh, once we've done that, like I mentioned, the form being dynamic, you will be able to move to the next question. Just before we move on, just in regards to this form, please note that at the bottom of the form, you have previous step, which means you can go backwards again if there's any change you need to do. You can add notes, which is on the bottom here too also, should you feel that there are important information that the tax office is supposed to be aware of. You can also go here and add notes and it'll allow you to add new notes. If you had previously filed a return and you had done that, there will be notes entered there. So in the event the tax office is supposed to pick up this form, there will be notes in which you are sharing information with us. Please note that when you continue to the next step, the form will automatically save. However, if you want to finish in between this step and you have not moved to continue to the next step, note that you will have to save at the bottom to be able to save everything that you have filled. Otherwise, the form will not save for you. And when you come back next, you'll have to redo everything that you have just done. So on that note, uh, just another important information that you need to know. And I know most of you that have been dealing with the tax office in regards to this form or in regards to our entities forms, you would be aware of what we call the form bundle number. So every time you correspond with this office, making inquiries in regards to any application that you have sent in, it is important to note your form bundle numbers. Yes, we know that we deal with the teens, but for entities purposes, the form bundle numbers will actually direct us directly to whatever you're querying. So we will move to the next one, which is about reported PAY withholding. Okay, in this space, you will see the information from your employers. In the event your employer had been filing the EMS files, the information here will actually be populated unless pre-populated for us. And you will see that all of it, whatever information is there, you will just have to pick it up. Whether this information corresponds to the information you have before you at the point of filing this return. Should you agree with all the information here, you will be able to move forward. But in the event you disagree with any information here, there's other avenues that you can go and seek redress, which is actually making sure that you get the, the correct information from the employer in order to be able to pre-populate this particular section. Once this is completed, it will take you to the next step, which is additional employment income. Note here, you have the um, luxury of adding whatever income you fill has been omitted and you employer has not putting it, has not uh, entered it. So you are able to add it here by using this add new. So every time you have an add new here, it means you will be able to add something here. And please note that you have at the end, the paper clip, which actually is indication that there is something that needs to be attached here, uploaded here or you have this uh, tick, which means you need to edit, or you have this bin, which means in the event you want to delete whatever information is there. So please note that these informations are there, which will allow you to successfully complete uh, any page that we come through. So this will take us to the next page, moving forward, which is in regards to dividends. Please note that here there is a requirement that once you see, like I mentioned, that the forms are dynamic, all information needs to be uploaded before we can move forward. If you note, because we had done an add new here and the information had come up, which means now we have to do an addition. But like I mentioned, for the purpose of this, um, a purpose of this demonstration, we will not be entering any figures here and we will just move forward. So I've just deleted that row and now we can move forward. Okay, the next income that we come into is 
other income. In here, like the previous form that we had come through, you add new and you actually add in whatever you need to if you feel that there are that needs to be included in order to make a correct determination of your tax liability. So you can always just come into this add um, other income and add just like we did in the previous page. So we can move on to the next page from here. Okay, so we're here in the next page and the next page is the other income that I had mentioned, which may include pensions income and other income. Please note that when it comes to pension income, we all know that there is an exemption. So you need to also enter your exemption here. On that token, there is a paper clip here which actually means you need to upload your your um, maybe your pay slip or whatever has been given to you um, where you are receiving your pensions from making a declaration of your income for any financial year so this um, pensions um, information will need you to do an upload in the absence of an upload you will not be able to move forward where you enter the pensions income and then you need to enter this exemption in order to do a correct determination of the portion of income that is supposed to be subjected to chargeable income. The next uh, coming up is financial statements. On the statements, the requirements are here on total sales. You will have to enter that. Please note moving forward from here, every time you see an icon such as this, this is an indication that a schedule is required in order to input a figure here. So you will not be able to do any direct input here unless you have to your schedule, enter the figures from your schedule for this to be populated. And this is what the schedule looks like. Uh, as you note, uh, there would be um, FSIC based on the FSIC that you had entered. Uh, this would actually make allow you to enter your local sales and your overseas sales. Like in previous schedules, you've got the edit uh, tick box here and you've got the bin here should you be, want to uh, delete this information. Moving forward, the other information that is required here, you see on sales, uh, these other sales, this information does not play a role in making a determination of what you are supposed to be liable for. So these are direct inputs. You see that there are just zeros there and you can directly input the figures there. Like I mentioned, the next line, total purchases is also a schedule based and your stock, you have to directly input that in. And I'm sure you would be able to pull this information from your financials that you have with you. Rental income, you'll have to enter your rental income also. And that is also a direct input field. And likewise with the other expenses that is here. Once you've got that completed, the, the question, a follow-up question that is there, whereby the system, you whether you are VAT inclusive, whether financials that you have declared are VAT inclusive or VAT exclusive. I'm sure to most of us this would actually mean if you're declaring your income as VAT inclusive, that the then FRCS would expect that to be part of your expenses. In the event it is VAT, we will not expect to see that as part of your expenses. Um, the next part of these financial statements are just um, your total assets and your total liabilities with your equity. And please note that these are also schedule-based information whereby you need to go into the schedule and upload those information that is required to be put in. On your cash flow statement, please note that these are direct input fields whereby you just go in and enter the amounts that you need to enter also there. Once you've completed all of this information into the system that is required from your financial statements, please note that the financial statements question comes up. And this is the question that are your financial statements audited by an independent auditor or not? Answer to that is a yes and no. You will note that when you tick a yes, there would be an expectation of an advanced pricing arrangement annual compliance report. In the event you check a no, you, that will not be a requirement in the event you, you uh, tick a no. Note that on the top of all of this, you have these asterisks. The asterisks is actually meaning that these are mandatory fields. You need to complete these fields to allow us to move forward 
in the event you don't complete these fields, you will not be allowed to move forward. Also note that on the side of these fields, you have a question mark. When you click on this question mark, it's going to tell you the requirement of the upload that is required here. So you've got the instructions on the form helping you with this. And please note, moving forward, FRCS will be providing you with detailed user guidelines for all of this. So in the event you start using this, uh, you don't have the guidelines, uh, you can just go to the question marks and the question marks are supposed to advise you or give you the instruction that is required for these particular fields. Once you've got all of this completed and you've attached all the required documentations, you will move forward to what is called the international dealings. For international dealings, just like what we saw in regards to the question on residency, uh, it is the form is dynamic in the sense that dependent on your answers to the yes and no, you will be able to move forward or you will just go to the next. Um, you will have to be required to fill in the necessary details. Question is, were you a tax resident of Fiji during the year? Please note that in regards to international dealings, it is normally dealt with on an annual or return basis and not on the master data. Hence the requirement of this information on this return. Were you a tax resident of Fiji during the year? In the event you check yes, the next question comes up. But if you check no, you still have a question to follow through. So if you check yes, do you have any cross-border dealings or transactions with an associated party? If you check no, it stops right there and the system will allow you to move to the next information, which requires you to give us your taxable income. In the event you check yes, then there is a whole host of other conditions that is now applicable. Was the total value of a related party dealings or transactions greater than 500,000 during the financial year? If you check no, the system will allow you to go right through to the next um, page. But if you check yes, we understand that this is for personal income taxes and most of us may be small time businesses and this may not apply to us. So you can just uh, check no and forget everything else that is here. But should you check yes, because you're a big time sole trader, then you have all these other questions that you will now have to fill in. You've got the ownership structure, your ultimate parent, immediate parent and all of this that you will have to enter if you are a big time sole trader and you're um, and you answer a yes towards the total value of a related party dealings or transaction greater than Fiji and $500,000 during the financial year. So for the purpose of this, um, for the purpose of this registration, uh, for the, sorry, for the purpose of this demonstration, we will just check no and we will move forward. So the next step is a taxable income. Note that this is an indirect input field where I believe we'll just take your net profit from, um, from your financials and insert it here. And the taxable income not included in accounting profit. So here you will have to make a determination of what information you will need to input, dependent whether it has been included in your accounting profit or not. If it has not been included in your accounting profit, that it's then you and we know that they are taxable income, then it should be included here. But I believe if you've already put it in your taxable profit, then this is something you can go right through. But please note that on the side other schedules where you need to input it through the schedule, you cannot input the figures directly. There are certain fields here that you will have to do a direct input, whereas there are fields that you will need uh, just to do it through the schedule. Also note that there are certain fields here where you will need an attachment if you enter anything. If you do not enter anything here, then there is no need for an attachment. But if you do enter any amount on here, then there is a need for an attachment to be sent. Once you have completed this and you are satisfied with the information that you've put in, you will move, we will move to the next step, which is accounting expenditure. Bearing in mind that not all accounting expenditure are also allowed for tax purposes, then this is the purpose of that. So expenditure or loss of a domestic or private nature. And like I mentioned before, those that are direct inputs and those that are actually schedule based, you'll just continue to look for the ones that is applicable to you and you can enter them. Um, 
just for the ease of our demonstration, like I mentioned, we will not be making this complex and complicated where we'll be entering figures. So we will just be putting in and showing you an overview of what is expected. So once you've completed this part of it, whereby you are supposed to enter your accounting expenditure, we will be able to move to the next um, page which is in regards to non-taxable income. Okay, you will find that in here that there are a series of questions. So depending on what is applicable to you, you will need to answer a yes or no. You will note that this form has got all no's, which means we haven't, um, I mean, like I mentioned, the ease of this demonstration. But let's say we select a yes. In the event you select a yes, then it's you need to enter something. Eh? Should you enter a yes, you will need, which means that this particular issue is applicable to you. So you will need to enter an amount there, whatever it is that you need to do. Note that this is not taxable income included in account uh, accounting profit. So you can make that determination if you have included it or you have not included it and make a determination on what will be your answers to this part of the question. So if you select all no, then you will not have to fill in any other information and you can move forward. Income subjected to non-resident international shipping income. That is also required through a schedule. It, if that is in the event, it is applicable to you. Income subject to capital gains tax, you need to put that directly in also. Please note from here, you will see uh, information that will be extracted from income tax concession should you have made an application for income tax concession. Right now, income tax concession is already live in ENTIS. So for those of us who want to make use of that, you can go ahead and make that application. And the approval number is here. Like I mentioned, we have these uh, form bundle numbers or reference number that we refer to. And that is what you will need to enter in here so that we are aware that you hold a valid uh, approval certificate, a certificate that is valid in terms of its approval. So you will need to enter your approval number and the system will read that it is valid and will allow you to move forward from here. Questions such as this that we see here, are you a prescribed small or micro enterprise? Should you click yes, it's gonna ask you for the um, additional figure, but if you click no, then it's gonna allow you to move forward. I hope we understand that we will only be looking at whatever is relevant to us. Whatever is not re relevant, we can actually move right through and carry on to the next part of the form. So the next part of the form is in regards to allowable deductions. And with allowable deductions, we've got depreciation, we've got amortization of business, and we are all fully aware that for depreciation, given the tax, the depreciation rates are different for accounting purposes and for tax purposes. Hence, we have schedules also on the side here. So you will need to enter everything into these schedules. And from here, you will see that they are, you can import and download the template. You can download the template that is required to meet the criteria that we need here so that you can upload it or import it back into the form. But if your uh, um, the depreciation schedule is just a handful, you can just continue to use the add button and just enter it if it's maybe less than 10 and it's manageable for you to in enter it individually. But in the event you've got a big set of uh, financials, then it will be uh, suggested or recommended that you download the template and enter the information as per the requirements there, so that when you uh, import the file back into the system, you'll be able to do it successfully. So we've got um, schedules all here for this particular field, dependent on what is applicable to you, whether it's relevant or not. In the event you did not participate in any of this during the financial year, you can move right through and just leave it as it is. For allowable deductions, we know there are also some in, um, income tax uh, incentives that had been offered by government, which uh, FRCS actually facilitates the approval. Just like the income tax concession we had seen previously, you will have to enter the approval, no the approval numbers also here which you will be, you know, at points in time, the FRCS offers would actually use the term reference number and approval number interchangeably. Actually, they are meaning the same thing. 
Okay, once you've got all this done and you're satisfied with everything you've put in, that'll allow you to move to your next step, which is in, re in relation to property income. With property income, it's the same, um, same issue here. You have to enter it through a, um, a, through a schedule. You don't do it as a direct input. You will enter it through a schedule in, re in order for the amounts to be uh, actually up uploaded into here. And then you'll have a subtotal of property income at the end of it, which is automatically calculated. Next page uh, is regards to business income summary, which is a tax credits. Sorry, it's in regards to tax credits and rebates. Uh, here you will find that we've got uh, the foreign tax income separated. So if you've got foreign source income and you select yes, then it will be required of you to enter your foreign tax credit. And if you enter an amount here and foreign tax credit, that it is now mandatory for you to attach those withholding certificates that you hold from whichever foreign tax jurisdiction that you have you have earned an income from should you click no then it doesn't ask you for that foreign tax credit please note that given the rules around foreign tax credit is imperative or important that you enter that number so that the correct credit could be granted in regards to your foreign tax income the next one is did you uh, complete a tv commercial and the same thing if you click a yes here it will ask you for the information and at the same time ask you to put it through a schedule in order for that to be populated. But the event question, the answer to this question is a no, then it will just allow you to move to the next one. And the next one is in regards to um, capital expenditure, which is a rebate. And this is also applied through the income tax concessions. So this rebate is also part of the 28 uh, income tax concession that is now live through our income tax concession request, which is in the portals at the moment. So this, be, this being a rebate, hence it's classified in here. It's been put with these uh, credits. Okay, so now we will move to the sec uh, next part of it, which is the business income summary. Please note that when we come to the business income summary, this information would already have been properly pre-populated from the information you had put in the previous pages. You will not be able to enter anything here. Hence the importance of you entering the correct information in the correct fields and in the relevant fields so that the amounts are pre-populated correctly here. For loss carried forward at the moment, it is a direct input field. Uh, moving forward, we know that coming out of fits into entities, we don't have that breakdown of losses for each individual years. Therefore, we are unable to automate this process at this point in time. Moving forward, we look forward to having, get, uh, to having that done, whereby you will have a schedule that the system will be picking up the losses and populating it itself. But for the time being, it's something that we will have to do or you will have to enter by, um, as uh, you fill in the form. And like next one is your chargeable income, which is actually pre-populated already. Your advanced tax payments, which you will have to enter the payments here for advanced payments and for your provisional tax, if any, and your withholding tax from interest, if any, where you have to populate through. Please note that all of these fields, apart from loss carried forwards, are not direct input field. Whether they have been imported from previous information you have updated, whether you are required to put in through a schedule. So it is important that you make sure that the information in previous parts of the form are actually entered correctly. The next part of it is asset declaration. And in here, it's also a not, not a direct input field where you are required schedules. You will need to open up the schedules and import any assets that you have, whether it be in Fiji or abroad. So that is in regards to the uh, asset declaration and we move to the next part which is income from partnerships and trusts income from partnerships we know that some of us would be in receipt of income from partnerships and also note that partnerships will be filed through cit and not pit moving forward in entis so it is important that you enter this schedule through here on where is you're deriving your income from this is coming from the cit because partnerships for the purpose of entities has been classified as a CIT return. 
So it's important that you enter this through a schedule, whether you're deriving income from partnership and share of non-resident paid by a partnership, and it's supposed to be uploaded also on this next part on income from partnerships. And the next one is income from trusts, which you will need to upload through the form and the information is supposed to be updated. Okay, the next part we will go to is the summary. And in the summary, you will find everything that you have entered previously in the previous pages. We will have, or we would have all of these now pre-populated into this summary where your chargeable income subtotals are. It will now all be here and reflected. And from here, you'll be able to see whether you had done anything wrong in the previous sections. If you had done it wrong, you're bound to disagree with the outcome here. And then you can always go back to check where did you actually go wrong. Um, then the next part of it will be tax on chargeable income. It'll show you your liability. If there's any credits that they has been withheld, it'll show you how much has been withheld and the total liability that is supposed to be there. This is followed by the penalty part of it. If it is a nil return, the system will be ad, um, charging you a dollar per day penalty, but the event, the return is yielding a chargeable income, um, a tax liability, it'll be 20% of that, which we see in the next one. So once we get there, we've gotten to the end of it. And the last part is the declaration, which is common to all of our forms, where you just need to check the box that everything you have declared is true and correct to allow you to submit. So once you check that box, you're supposed to have the submit button popping up. As we see here, the submit button is now there. So which means this form is now ready to be submitted. I will not submit this form for the purpose of this uh, presentation. So we are all aware that once we successfully um, submit a form, we get that confirmation advising you that you have successfully submitted it and you will be able to go to your correspondence style and see the success, the uh, confirmation uh, letter there. So I've come to the end of this demonstration. Uh, we would be ready to take any questions if you have any questions and answer them. And um, so it is now time for you to ask any questions, should there be any. Okay. Uh, I do think that is the question, would it be in regards to this? The question is uh, requirements. Okay. The attachment requirements. Uh, you will find, like I mentioned, there's a question mark here. And it says, please attach and the format that needs to be given. And this is in regards to an income statement. You need to upload an, up, uh, an income statement here. And the requirement of the income statement is supposed to be in this format, whether it's PDF, JPEG, uh, PNG, and the size, it's not supposed to be more than five megabytes. So the instructions here, so let's say I do an upload. Okay, just in regards to the attachment, yeah, what are the attachment required? Please note, like as I pointed out of the question mark, the format is yours. It's only the schedules that we are providing the, uh, the format for, where the schedules are and we are pro where we are providing templates. But in the event we're asking for just an upload, it's just either a PDF document as per the requirement on that question mark. So that is in re regards to the attachments that are required. And I think that question was from Nitika, Nikita. I hope Nikita have answered your question. Uh, Nikita, I think you've answered and asked another question to in regards to advance pricing arrangement and all compliance report was still in regards to the uh, APA. There's a jury pricing arrangement annual report, uh, compliance report. I th um, if you select yes, this actually comes which is here, the Advanced Pricing or Renewal Compliance Report. This is the one that comes up when you select a yes. But when you select a no, it's not supposed to be the system. She's saying, write that down. So it is noted. Thank you, Nikita, for bringing that to attention. We note that, and it's something that we will actually attend to. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay. Um, I know that uh, in regards to the approval numbers, Nikita, where you're asking that it be pre-populated, we are aware of that, but at the moment, the income tax solution is actually a standalone. It's um, to any of the other 
it at the moment. So hence the request for you to enter the approval number. I hope that answers your question because at the moment we haven't actually linked it to the income tax return. So because it has already gone live, we are not in a position to test that right now. Uh, we might be looking that as future enhancement, but for the time being, we're just trying to roll out the processes as and when they are ready. Dutchman Naidu, I'll ask any to attend to this. This uh, link to presentation to the email. So I'll just whether to attend to this. Uh, yes, Deepa, I see you have a question. Okay, Deepa, for your information in regards to the declaration, my liability, please that this is a filing by a taxpayer not a filing by a tax agent if it were a filing by a tax agent it will require an attachment which is a tax agent declaration uh, for your information and we've done this uh, presentation based on a filing of a taxpayer and not the filing of a tax agent so what um, what you're actually referring to is supposed to be seen on the filing of a tax agent uh, Fayaz. Why is cash flow required when it's not used a lot by small businesses? Uh, we note your, uh, we note what you're saying and we'll reconsider it. Like I mentioned, this is something that we are just rolling out for you to f get a feel of it uh, when we move forward. We are noting uh, that cash flow and we will get back to you in the future. Okay. Uh, Deepa, uh, in regards to your depreciation schedule, yes, we note, and I know we've had discussions around that in regards to the registration number. Uh, this is actually for motor vehicles, uh, where motor vehicles require registration number. So I think it's something that we are still discussing and we haven't firmed up. We'll get back to you on the final uh, template for depreciation uh, schedules. Okay, Deepa, we will note that you're asking for the schedules for us to email that all to you. Uh, we are noting that down and we'll try and extract all the schedules and try and put it together and be able to share it with you guys. I'm quite not sure about this question, uh, Fayaz. How will tax credits carry it forward? Please note that the tax credit is only for that particular year. You will not be able to carry it forward into the next year, unlike losses. So I'm not sure of what is this question leading to. How will tax credits carried forward from prior periods be pre-populated in this system if it only has PT and withholding tax? I'm not sure because um, our understanding is uh, tax credits is only utilized in that income year and you don't carry it for your tax credits. The only other issue is you have overpayments. If you have overpayments in terms of your tax credits, that becomes a refund to you. I hope I'm clear in regards to that, and I hope I've answered your question, Fayaz. Okay, uh, from uh, Arzu, uh, your question is, can you tell us why the cash flow attachment is required? Like I mentioned, uh, we will get back to you in regards to this. We Once we've got the final uh, solution, we'll, you'll be able to see what it is. Uh, another question from Arzu. Uh, apology if I'm uh, pronouncing your name wrongly. We don't uh, we don't usually prepare the cash flow for, for small business when preparing the financials. Yes, we understand that, and we'll back get back to you on uh, whether it will be a requirement when the final solution comes out. And uh, I think this is the last question from Nikita. Attachment required templates in particular for entering each amount. Okay, like I mentioned, I had also raised this. We will try and get the templates together and we'll send it out to you in regards to the schedule so that you can have a look at it. And uh, if you need to, ha if you have issues in regards to this, you can raise it up again with the uh, FRCS. I think that is the last of the questions that I've found in the uh, chat, in the chat. Okay, Nikita. Okay, paper clip icon there that requires an attachment, then yes, it needs to be attached. If the amount there is zero, you don't need an attachment. For schedules, if you need to have that amount populated, yes, you will need to enter everything in the schedule for that field to be populated. In the absence of entering anything into the schedule, that field will yield a zero amount. Okay, that is from Ferretti. And the other question from Nikita, consider if we can upload our own um, format. Uh, we will not be doing that because we will be sharing the Excel that is required for you to upload 
Uh, that is to allow us to be able to pop it directly into the system. If you are allowed to do your own, there would be a mismatch and definitely the system will not be allowing your own to come through. So we will be sharing uh, Excel for you to be able to upload it into your system, upload it from your end to allow that smooth sailing. And we do understand that in this transition period, it will require a bit of work. But we do hope you, you understand us from that perspective. We cannot be having different formats because our system will be rejecting it and it could be quite frustrating, be frustrating for all of us. Okay, Deepa, another question from you. When is PIT expected to go live? At this point in time, we're looking at next year. And when we do have a firmed up um, date, we will be able to relay that across to you. But at this point in time, we're just looking at 2022 with no specific months uh, at the moment. I hope you understand us from that end, uh, Deepa. Is there any other questions? Okay, Deepa, in regards to our go-live dates, uh, definitely we will give you ample time. And like in all of our go-live periods, we normally provide these transitional periods uh, to allow you to come on, you know, familiarize with it so definitely you will all you'll be kept all in the loop on when is expected go live late date and we will actually be giving you ample time to be able to uh, come through with it okay ferretti um ferretti has asked can we see that format or doc upload not complicated like that so ease of lodgement Okay, Ferretti, Ferretti, sorry, Ferretti. So I think the upload documents will be giving it to you because in itself, those those uh, templates will be validated in itself. Uh, so it'll be something along the that because we need to validate all the information that require so that when it's uploaded, please noting that this being self-assessment, we need that all the information are correct first up to allow us to make a correct determination of what the tax liability will be. So um, it would be something along the VAT lines if you're trying to do that comparison. So because the validations will be placed into, into, the, um, into the Excel itself to allow only the correct information to come through. Um, and uh, Nikita, your question, okay. Likewise to, will there be any present done from Umesh? Uh, yes, we will be doing further presentation. This is just uh, a walkthrough. What we've done today is just a walkthrough. There'll be further presentations uh, moving into when we are about to roll out live. And yes, you will be brought in to do testings also. And uh, just like what we did for the other rollouts that we did, did for other processes, you will be allowed to come in and toggle with it. Uh, depending at the time or the environment we'll be offering you, with the, if we'll be offering you the pre-prod environment, you will be bringing in your tech peers, your own clients to come and test with. But if we'll be giving you the UAT environment, our user uh, acceptance testing environment, then we will be providing you with data. So depending on which environment we'll be allowing you to come into, will be the data that will also be provided to you. And it will be all this information will be relayed to you so that you are better prepared and ready for it. I hope that answers your question, Umesh, in uh, regards to presentations in the future and rollout, and for any of you with the same uh, questions in mind. Yes, yeah, thank you, Ferretti, for your offer to assist in terms of the consultation process. We'll be getting back to you. So expecting uh, our awareness team to be reaching out to you again in the future. Thank you everyone for your taking out your time and effort to join for this session. Hopefully the session was uh, a good learning uh, session. Uh, in case if uh, you have any other question after this session uh, finishes, uh, you uh, you are most welcome uh, to email. Uh, uh, you can drop an email to me on uh, aichandra002 at frcs.org.fj.